Hi, I'm Stephanie Razzo. Welcome to Nature Sketch Creates Monarch Butterfly Step-by-Step -step Painting Instructions video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the step-by-step -step painting instructions in order to paint the monarch butterfly. First, collect all your materials and make sure they're ready to go. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, relax, have fun, and don't worry too much if you think you made a mistake. Let's get started. Step one, transfer the image to the watercolor paper. So you'll want to tape the image on the top, somewhere where it's not covering any of the lines, to the back of the watercolor paper. Open it up and place the graphite transfer paper dark side down. You see that this is dark and the light side up. And then press it down flat. Then you can get started on transferring the lines. Use about a medium pressure. And just go over and trace the lines. Don't worry too much if you don't get them exact. This is just a sketch and I usually trace over one or two and then check to see if the lines are transferring and that looks pretty good you want to use about a medium pressure to get those lines and you'll use the lines at the end again so it's fine if they show up if they're dark if they're too light make it kind of hard for you so make sure they're medium to dark just go ahead and go over all of those lines. Maybe you put on a podcast, some music, or an audiobook. Just relax. When you transfer it all the lines, just flip it up and down a few times to see if you missed any. I always miss something. Or maybe I didn't put enough pressure when I went over certain areas. So I always check it. And if you, if you still miss something after you remove the tape and the paper, it's okay. You can just draw that in later. But it helps to have all the lines, as many lines as possible. If you flip it up and down, you can see what you might have missed. I think that looks pretty good. And like I said, if I missed anything, I can go back and draw that in another time. So go ahead and remove the transfer paper and save it for later. Remove the tracing image, transfer image. Remove the tape. I like to reuse it, so I just set it to the side. And keep the transfer image to protect your image watercolor painting while you're actually painting from hand marks or any kind of drips that might happen from the paint. And now, you can go ahead and take your kneaded eraser. You can knead it a little bit if you want to, to freshen it up. And then just go over areas like this where the smudge is. Sometimes they come off, sometimes they don't. Just a sketch, so it's okay. And anything that's too dark, like maybe right here, just a little bit. Smooth it out. And now I'm ready to move on to step two. Step two, paint in the wettest, lightest layer of Monarch Butterfly Yellow Orange. So I'll take two drops of the Hansa Deep Yellow and I'll just be mixing it with some water to make it wetter or drier, wetter being the lighter and drier being more concentrated. And I put a few drops down there. It doesn't really make a difference since I'm not actually going to be mixing it with anything. And I have my pre-filled water brush. 
I'll just add a little bit of water. And I'm going to be painting in the wettest, lightest layer. So I'll take just a little bit of that to the side and add a bunch of water. And I'll test it out on my test strip. And that looks pretty close to the A color. And so I'll use that and I'll just fill in everything just like I see in step two. So basically the inner areas of the upper wings, it doesn't need to be exact, just kind of start in a central area and then move out towards the edges. Make sure to dab your brush off onto your towel to help control the amount of water that and the concentration of the paint that's being applied to your painting. And if you get it into the body, that's okay too. When it starts to get a little light, get a little bit more paint, dab it on your towel and start again kind of in a central area and then work the paint towards the edges. And it doesn't need to be exact. This is very approximate. We can add a little bit more here. Oh, kind of messy, makes it fun. All right, and when you have all of that filled in, go ahead and clean off your brush, let it dry and move on to step three. Best way to test if this is dry is just to be dab it if you're unsure and don't smudge it like this because then you can if it's wet it might make a mess if you take a clean finger and dab it you can test to see if it's dry step three paint in the driest darkest monarch butterfly deep orange and yellow orange So you'll want one drop of the 15H Permanent Red. Make sure to mix that together before you use it. Sometimes the paint pigment settles. Just one drop. And then three drops of the 13H Hansa Deep Yellow. One, two, three. Go ahead and mix that up. And you'll be adding that to the upper wings, the forewing. Test it out on your paper first. It's pretty dry and dark. Make sure to dab it on your onto your towel, brush onto your towel first, and then just kind of add it in and in the four wing cells does not have to be exact just go ahead and add that in if you need more paint at any point you can just pick a little bit more up it's kind of on the outside of the cells and then you can take a clean brush to kind of move it through and it gets it's messy on the outside of the cells that's okay in fact I think it'll be even more fun if you do that that way every time I paint it turns out a little bit different too it's kind of the fun of watercolor you can't 100% control where it all goes so it makes it very unique every time. I'm going to create a little bit more of a gradient on this side. Adding some paint there, dabbing my paintbrush off on my towel by and squeezing a little bit of water to clean it out, taking that pretty clean brush and then just kind of moving the paint from the edges into the spaces. It's gonna be really messy, it's totally fine. 
I'm gonna just take that brush and go over these cells as well. Maybe these ones too. I'm gonna dab my brush off, clean it up. Then I'm gonna take the color that we mixed in step two, B, the butterfly yellow orange, and paint it onto the hind wing, the bottom wing here. Take, pick up a little bit of that and test it out. Great, concentrated. I'm gonna do the same thing that I did and the four wings just kind of add it in to the cells in a real messy kind of way. It doesn't need to be exact and getting the color outside is totally fine. If you look up close, well, when I looked up close to the wings of the butterfly, you can kind of see some other colors in the black areas. So it seems some of those scales are not just black, but orange as well. It's not super consistent either. All right. Clean off your brush and then let this dry and move on to step four. Step four, paint in the first layer of Monarch Black. So you can shake up to mix the 11H Carbon Black. I'm going to put a couple drops. You can always put more later if you need it. And add a little bit of water. And pull some to the side and add a little bit more water to that. You have some that's drier and darker and some lighter wetter, and then test it out. It looks pretty dark. Oops. So I'll add more water, dab it off onto my towel, and test it on my paper again. Maybe even a little bit lighter. It's always better to start a bit light than dark. That looks good. Oh, it kind of looks like my F and G color here. I'm going to start with the F in the antenna and the head and the thorax and abdomen. And just kind of work my way down. If these lines are too thin for you, you can always save them for Later, uh, you can fill it in with your pen instead. And the best way to avoid filling in these dots, the white spots, with your black is to paint around them and then fill it in. The water will just will stay out of that dry area. The color pigment will stay out of that dry area. And if you do get into any of those dots, it's okay. This is just a sketch. It doesn't need to be exact. But go slow. Make sure you don't have too much water in your brush. Again, you can control that by dabbing off onto the towel. And just go ahead and go through the body and add this color, the abdomen, the thorax, and then work your way into the wings using the same technique to kind of keep those white spots white throughout. And 
start light, it's best to start with a lighter color. If you get too much paint on your brush, you can just dab it off on your towel because you can always work a little bit to the darker side with watercolor, but it's very hard to work backwards. So you can do multiple layers just even in this step. Just make sure you let it dry in between. And what I mean by layers is painting, once it dries, painting another layer over the areas you just painted. And that'll add the darker color to get it where you want it to be. So again, painting around the spots and then filling in in between so on the outside of those spots and the outside of all these areas here. And it's a sketch, so if you don't get it the way you want, it's okay. It'll still look great. So go ahead and go through and add all those black areas. So I painted in that first color F, and now I'm gonna get this second color G. It's got a bit, a bit drier. Let me make sure to get that color again. Adding some water. Looks good. And it's already dry here in the antenna. So I will add a little bit of paint there. And in the head as well, looks like that's darker in that step on the eyes. And again, any of the finer details you can get later on. So if it gets too, it's too hard for you to keep the white areas, you can save that for looking a bit different from the picture. And that's going to be unique to my mood, to how I'm feeling a certain day from one day to the next. Yours will definitely be unique to you as well. And it will be a little bit different depending on where the watercolor paint falls, how you're feeling on that given day that you decide to start painting. You add some wet color to the wet areas to make it a little bit darker and the paint will just stay in those wet areas and then you can move it into a drier area and it's just a sketch so it's a bit messy it's just kind of going where it needs to go and not worrying too much about it. Just relaxing and enjoying yourself practicing painting a butterfly.
And I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more to the other side here too, just finish it. Probably add a little bit to the hind wings as well. It's already dried, so adding that second layer is going to work out fine. And I'm referring to my final image and the image in step four of where to add this paint. You can also refer to your transfer image if needed to. And just take your time outlining those dots. And if you end up painting them in, it's okay. It's still gonna look like a monarch. And if you want to wait until the last step, you can do that as well and draw them in with a pen. It's a little easier to control if that's what you prefer. I encourage you to try the watercolor because like I said, it's a sketch and it doesn't matter too much about getting it exact. I'm cleaning off my brush in between steps here and I'm going to let this dry and move on to step five. Step five, paint in another layer of Monarch Deep Orange. So the Monarch Deep Orange was the color we mixed. A little bit of the permanent red and the Hansa Deep Yellow. I'm going to add some more water to that because mine dried up quite a bit. I'm going to find those, that C and D color by adding, pulling a little bit to the side and adding some water, dabbing it off on my towel and trying it again on my test strip. That looks like kind of a D, so I want something even lighter, so I'm going to add more water. Be careful not to mix it with my other color, that will change the color. And that looks even lighter. I'm gonna start with that really light wet color. So wet being that it's a lot of water added to it. And I'm going to add, looking at step five and my final reference image, a little bit more to add a little bit more of a gradient and deeper color to these cells and the hind wing. I went pretty dark on the upper wings with that first layer, so I may not need to add much more there. And that happens sometimes. Things are a little different based on the mood. Again, making it unique. Just kind of adding this to the outer edges here. To create a little bit of contrast, the light might be hitting the wings.
And I'll just look at this and then my final reference image a few times and the image in step five and make sure I've covered all the areas that I want to add some color to. I think it looks good. It's just a sketch, it doesn't need to be right. And already I'm sure you're noticing some differences. It's a good demonstration on how it's okay to be a little bit different from the step-by-step. -step. It's still gonna turn out great. So let that dry and then move on to step six. Step six, add more monarch black throughout. You want to add G and H, referring to both your final reference image and step six to figure out where to add that paint. Again, this can be done in multiple layers and letting it dry between each one to get it to where you want it to be. You can easily do this in one layer, but if you don't feel comfortable, please take your time and do it in multiple layers. I'm gonna start with the lighter color, G. Picking up a little bit off my palette, testing it on my paper again, my test strip and adding it to the abdomen. Now if it's a little too dark, I'm just gonna dab it onto my towel. Seems a little too dark to me. And it's not gonna be the same. And then I'm gonna take more of that really dark color. Now that I've laid in all of my black areas, I can basically just take this dark color and add it in. I'm just gonna add it to the bottom of the antenna so I have a little bit of light shining up on the top of the antenna. And if this is too difficult, just wait and use your pen to do that. So go ahead and just add this color throughout doing, if you did the abdomen one just now, first like I did, make sure to wait to do that part last so it can dry before you do it. And if you need to add more layers, just go ahead and wait for them to dry in between. And all that really dark color, I'm gonna take a lighter G color and go over some of these darker areas in the cells. I'm gonna start with the area that's already dry here on this wing. I'm not gonna do the wing areas that I just painted. And if I need, if you need to, just wait for it to dry. So there's a little bit 
make sure to dab it off in your towel if you have too much. That's a little too much. A little bit adding some shading on these cells. And so I'm just gonna add that in there using that light G black color. And it's right over these cells here. And since this upper wing is dry, that's fine. And a little bit around here. Maybe this one a little more. I don't have to worry too much about the lines. Be redefining those with the ink. And a little bit in there. Be adding that one more time at the end. Um, not really in the lower wings, but then here in the upper wing, this is dry now. So I'm going to add it to these cells. Getting real messy, it's just a sketch. And if I get too much, I can dab it off on my towel and then just kind of pick it up. I'll lighten that up a bit. And wherever that paint falls, it looks great. This is still pretty light compared to step six, so I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of the H again, starting with the head and the antenna. And going through again. It'll be a little faster this time because I won't have to guide myself on where to add it. Just putting it over all these dark spots. Now, last time I made sure to, to guide myself by using my finger on the image to keep track of where I was painting. So when I was at these dots, I kept my finger at those dots. And then I would move on to the next dots, keep track of where I am in the image by moving my finger around. And you might find that to be helpful as well. But right now, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this really dark color and all the areas that I already painted. So it should go pretty fast compared to the last step. I think that's dark enough, so I will go ahead and leave it there, let it dry, and then move on to step seven. Step seven, add ink lines and some more paint. After you add the ink lines, you can tell a little bit better where you want a little bit more paint. So go ahead and use the 005 Black Micron to add the initial outlines, kind of like all these lines that you added when you transferred the image. So you'll be drawing those again over this image. And then also outline the common name here and write in the scientific name as well. You can use your transfer image to refer to for where these lines go. And you can also use your final reference image. And you may find you want to define some of the lines based on where your paint landed. So um, just go ahead and change that wherever needed. So just go ahead and go throughout. You can use, another tip you can do is, you can use your finger to guide your eyes on where you need to add lines. So you can just kind of follow it so that you don't get lost in the image. And you can do this. It might be a little difficult, but just take it as a meditation, relaxation exercise, adding all these little lines in.
Now that I've added all the 005 lines, I'm gonna go ahead and write in the scientific name with the 01 black micron. I'm just gonna add that real quick. And then I will be adding the 08 lines. And you'll find this to be the most satisfying part. It's gonna really bring the whole image together and take it out of this ugly stage. And again, just use your step 7B, your final reference image, and your transfer image to help you figure out where to add those lines. And don't be afraid to redefine things. And this is your image, it's going to be unique to you, which is going to be amazing. And just go through and have fun adding in these thick areas. There are some areas where it is a little bit lined. So in the wings, you'll see in the final reference, it's a little lined. So you wanna go in direction of those lines when you fill in the area to let a little bit of that paint show through. Adds a little bit more contrast and some texture. So when you're adding that, just make sure you go in the direction of those lines. And the same with the body here, the abdomen, there are some lines. And when you're adding them, just make sure you go in the same direction as in the image. So top to bottom here, and then the lines on the wing are coming from the inside to the outside in the direction of the cells. And these are kind of like little hairs. The Butterfly has that texture over its body. Little cells on the wings. Uh, and if you fill it in with the lines and go in the right direction, add a nice contrast with the watercolor showing through. So just go ahead and follow your images. Now that I've added all the 08 lines, I'm going to add a little bit more of the B, D, E, and F as needed. And you can just add whatever paint you think is needed. So I'm gonna start with, I think that's most glaring to me that I need in my image is a little bit darker here on the abdomen. So I'll add that in. And now that the black's there, I can really see how it contrasts and how much is needed to finish this image. Not a lot. And I'll look over it and see if I need anything else. I could just add a little bit more of any of the colors that I feel appropriate. And make sure to test it, dab it on your towel and test it on your strip beforehand if needed. And I'm just gonna brighten this up a little bit on the lower wing by adding just a little bit more of B. I went pretty dark with the paint overall, so it's already pretty bright in most areas. And so I won't need to add a lot more of anything else. I think I like where it's at. 
And as you can see, it turned out a little bit different. And every time I paint, my image turns out different and your painting will end up being unique to you as well. We're done, great job. You've created a painting that's unique to you. Thank you for joining me. I hope you had fun and had a chance to relax a little. Next, you have a couple of options of what to do with this painting. You can punch holes in it and add it to your sketchbook. You can frame it, gift it, make sure to also share it on our Facebook banner page. Check out the Nature Sketch Create website to sign up for the newsletter for regular updates and to shop for future crates. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel. Thank you.